Uh, good morning and welcome back to Masterclass 1.5. Once thought of as the building material of the poor, bamboo is now being used more prominently in all types of architecture. From houses to business buildings, there are more and more places that are being built with bamboo as a main material. Unlike wood, which takes between 20 to 60 years to mature to the stage where we can harvest, bamboo takes a very short amount of time to regenerate. In comparison, most species of bamboo that are used in buildings can be harvested after three to six years of growth. Bamboo is a unique building material in that it is strong in both rigidity and density. While tensile strength remains the same throughout the age of bamboo plant, the, fibre, the plant fiber strength increases as it gets older. While the world isn't ready for the whole city made out of bamboo, it is certainly ready for homes made of it, and it seems to have a bright future. The masterclass is a series of five webinars directed by Center for Green Building Material and Technology in partnership with Aditya Academy of Architecture and Design, partnered with Bamboo Society of India and World Bamboo Organization. I welcome you all to this fifth and final session of the series, Masterclass 1.5, titled Building with Bamboo. I heartily welcome our chief guest, architect Khan Habib Ahmed Mohammed, Moderator, Architect Vidyadar Vodayar, and the esteemed speakers, Dr. Marcus and Architect Neela Manjunath. I now introduce Architect Vidyadar Vodayar, ex-chairman IA Karnataka chapter, who will, be the moderate, who will be moderating the session today. Architect Vidyadar S. Vodayar, BARC, MURP, FIIA, FITP, FIV, a triple ID, architect town planner. Graduated as an architect from UVCE with first class in 1979 and masters in urban and regional planning from SPA New Delhi in 1982. Third is the founder of Arch Plan established in December 1985. Third's credentials run under various subtitles. Professional memberships, member Council of Architecture, Fellow Member, Indian Institute of Architects, Fellow Member, Indian Institute of Town Planners, Associate, Institute of Interior Design, Fellow Member, Institute of Valuers, Member, Institute of Standards Engineer. Professional Activities, Chairman, the Indian Institute of Architect, Karnataka Chapter, 2010 to 2012, and 2012 to 2015. Secretary, Institute of Town Planners, India, Karnataka, 2000 to 2002, and has chaired similar positions in more than 20 professional bodies. Empaneled as architect, interior, valuer, and urban planning consultant in government bodies like Jawaharlal Nehru Urban Renewal Mission, Government of India, Karnataka Urban Infrastructure Development and Finance Corporation, and many more. Successfully completed consultancy in a number of urban planning projects and public sector companies. Now I kindly request architect Vidya, Vidyadar Odeyar to take over the session and introduce our chief guest, architect Khan Habib, President, Council of Architecture. Over to you, sir. A very good morning to all. I am very overwhelmed by the introduction of Professor Ganesh Babu, sir. Thank you very much. Bamboo as a building material has high compressive strength and low weight, which is the greatest advantage. Bamboo are one of the fastest growing plants in the world, three times faster than the other plants of similar nature. Bamboo is very economical and available in abundance in Southeast Asia and South America. In India, especially in Northeastern states, it is one of the prominent material used in construction. Bamboo is renewable and extremely versatile and can be used for multiple purposes. 
housing shortage is the greatest challenge the world is facing this material and technology and the recent innovation are to be debated and discussed today i have a very difficult task of introducing the chief guest who is already very well known to the architectural fraternity both professional practicing architects and the, the academia at present he is the president of our council of architecture new delhi architect professor habib khan graduated from nuit and completed his masters in architectural design from university of illinois usa he returned to india in 1990 after working in philadelphia usa on many prestigious retail design projects for giants across the world he established his practice in the name of smita and habib khan architects he firmly believes that architecture shall be responsive to tradition climate and context which are seen in his design and projects presently he is the director of priyadarshini institute of architecture and design studio nagpur architect habib khan has been invited to many international national and international conferences as a keynote speaker and also in ia natcom 2009 nagpur 2012 in raipur i triple id natcom in goa 2008 kolhapur 2014 indoor 2015 and young architects festival etc to add to his feather he was invited as a speaker at an international conference in iaps glasgow in 2012 deep growth 2012 venice and deep growth 2016 in budapest several awards poured in to name a few JIA Best Interior Design Award by IAA in 1998, IAA CAF Young Architects Award in 2000, Orange City Achievement Award in 2009, State State Level Excellence in Architecture and Education Award by IAA Maharashtra Chapter. Recently, he and the architect Smita were recognized by the prestigious award by for promoting. of traditional and vernacular architecture in the world by intbua an organization promoted by his highness prince charles an interesting and surprising hidden talent of architect habib khan is that he is a avid painter and a writer of poetry as well he has exhibited his paintings on mahabharata ramayana and kabir he has written songs for triple id natcom indoor indoor design yatra IA centenary anthem and the theme song for beti bachao and beti padao campaign here i present architect professor habib khan a multi talented and multi faceted personality a very humble and a simple person sir please excuse me for missing to mention a lot more over to architect habib khan sir thank you thank you thank you vijayadar ji for that introduction a very elaborate one uh dr ganesh babu uh, markus and neelam manjunath vidyadhar ji all the faculty all the delegates audience students ladies and gentlemen it's a pleasure to be here and good morning to all of you and please accept greetings on behalf of the council of architecture bamboo as a building material has been in the spotlight recently and this is my third uh, webinar on this theme of bamboo and its applicability uh, recently i attended a webinar uh, by india bamboo forum where mr suresh prabhu is the chairman uh, and i am happy to say that council of architecture is entering into a, a mou with them to promote the use of bamboo and uh, not only in curriculum but also in profession uh like uh, vidyadhar ji have just said uh, my architecture is more contextual and more traditional and vernacular and i have been following that very passionately in since last 30 odd years and uh, we have also used bamboo quite a lot in our buildings uh, but uh, i have not had the strength and the guts enough to use it as a full fledged uh, building material or structural material to be very honest the reason for that is uh, uh, transportation of bamboo to me from northeastern areas or from where you can get good structural quality bamboo is not a very 
ideal thing because I strive to make buildings uh, as uh, close to the site as possible. I call it a, a 50 kilometer radius building, a 200 kilometer radius building. And to me, the shortest, uh, the shorter the radius, the more sustainable and more authentic the building is to the area and context where we're building. Uh, there are certain limitations to bamboo, which I think uh, a lot of people are working on it to make it more resilient and make it more widely acceptable. A lot of work is happening. Uh, a lot of mails keep coming, a lot of uh, uh, brochures and other information research papers keep coming to me uh, as to what is happening uh, in this field and how bamboo is being uh, worked on to make it into a sustainable and a viable uh, alternative building material. And I'm very happy to, so, uh, happy to see and to know that uh, uh, this cause of uh, very versatile material is being looked into uh, enthusiastically by our fraternity. The areas where bamboo is not produced, like I just discussed in the area that I work, uh, usually in dry and arid zones, uh, we, need to, uh, we need to step up our research as to how to make it more, uh, uh, more uh, viable building material. And I'm sure uh, Neelam and Marcus are working in this field for a long, long time. And then you will probably be able to give better solutions or answers to my uh, posers that I've just uh, put. But what I feel uh, basically I was discussing earlier was that uh, bamboo, the resistance of society to use bamboo as a permanent building material or similar alternative building materials like brick, uh, stone, load-bearing walls or mud as a construction material is not easily acceptable either by the policymakers and uh, also by the policymakers and by the society as well. So a lot of work needs to be done on this front and uh, I request uh, the academia and architects who are working in this field are interested in this field to take up this cause wherein, wherein this material, uh, these materials, especially bamboo would be uh, acceptable as a viable building material. And that will come through awareness in the society, that will come through the information that we can percolate to the society and by setting up examples, uh, examples of uh, successfully built uh, structures uh, which have outlasted uh, their perceived notions of you know, sustenance. And uh, uh, so it's my request to all those uh, forums and organizations and NGOs who are working in this field to also simultaneously uh, work out awareness levels of bamboo and uh, other materials as a viable uh, viable option for building. The acceptability of this uh, uh, type of construction, uh, full-fledged full, full structure made of bamboo and bamboo products needs to be also regularized by the uh, IS codes and by, by various authorities, by various uh, policies. And I'm sure that will happen only when, uh, only when we put a sustained pressure on the bureaucrats and the government and the policy makers who would probably see, uh, see the, the truth behind all this and see the light of, the, and, and the policy would uh, see the light of the day. And that will happen only when people like you, you know, people like uh, Neelamji and Marcus and all those organizations who are working in this field for long will come forward and educate the society in general. It is very good to talk about these materials. It's, 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 it's perfectly all right to talk about these materials, these alternative construction techniques and the importance of bamboo as a building material. And uh, in our closed forums of architects and students, uh, that's one cause to propagate uh, uh, the, the benefits of bamboo. But the second aspect is also to talk in forums which are outside the fraternity of architects. architects. And that is a cause that you need to take up. And uh, we will extend all possible help uh, that we can do at the council or at the IIA uh, level, where, wherein, we can, uh, wherein we can take this cause of taking bamboo to the society and making them aware of the, you know, of the limitations that are perceived and do not actually exist. So this is also a cause that I request all of you to look into it. Uh, recently, you'll be happy to know that the PMO has written directly to us and also through the ministry to incorporate bamboo and its uh, 
bamboo as a construction material and, and a, as a viable option to be incorporated into curriculum of the architectural schools. Uh, and there are a couple of uh, schools, uh, including the NIT at Nagpur, who has uh, who have uh, incorporated bamboo as a regular subject, not as an elective subject, but as a regular subject in their uh, syllabi. And uh, uh, we are working on a framework. And uh, if you can share with me the proceedings of today's uh, uh, webinar and other work that you have done, we will involve you all into the process this to the uh, curriculum in a more organized and a more structured manner. Uh, there are options in the new NEP, the new education policy, as well as the new uh, regulations 2020, minimum standards of architecture regulations 2020, wherein there is a flexibility given, there is enough flexibility given to the institutes to incorporate any subject of their choice or any thrust areas that they would want to involve in the, in the syllabi and the curriculum that they are uh, following in their respective institutes. And uh, taking advantage of this uh, flexibility, we would uh, do all possible, uh, you know, uh, we'll take all possible methods to uh, make bamboo as a regular, uh, bamboo uh, as a regular <coughs> subject in the syllabi of the institutes. So uh, thank you once again for uh, inviting me and making me a part of this uh, very interesting uh, aspect of building construction, which is also very close to my heart. And uh, I would have loved to be here for the entire duration of the presentations, but unfortunately, I have a meeting which I need to attend at eleven thirty. Hello. And, uh, I would like I would love to uh, see the recordings after you share the link with me. Thank you so much, Vidyadharji, Ganeshji, Neelam, and Marcus for being uh, with me on this panel. Thank you so much. Okay, sir. Thank after you. a wonderful so speech much. by architect Habib Khan. Who the use of bamboo in his the, in the building industry and its applicability in architectural practice, the education and importance of inclusion in the curriculum, and also stressed on accept, acceptability by the society and the clients. So I think uh, uh, we have given us uh, good uh, points to ponder on. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Now I request Professor Ganesh Babu to continue with the announcement. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Akrik uh, Habib. So, Marcus, uh, uh, we have the Council of Architecture President, and uh, uh, I think we, uh, he has to leave for an urgent meeting, and that's why he cannot uh, uh, be there present for the presentation. But he, as he said, that he promised that he would be going through it and he'll be getting back to us. And uh, this is Marcus uh, uh, Akrik Habib, who is uh, from Thailand. Yeah, yeah. and a self-taught architect and doing a lot of good work uh, for several years in the field That's of great. That's great. Uh, sustainable so. construction, I would say. Not just bamboo, but sustainable construction. Very nice. Yeah. Very Welcome. Nice. Thank you. I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more with many things that you said. Uh, I think you have a very, very clear grasp on, on what is necessary next, especially the introduction to the society. I, I agree with you, it's uh, an important uh, um, task that we all architects have to, to face. Thank you. We, we look forward to your cooperation and help. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Habib, sir. Yeah. I will take a few minutes for some important announcements about the master class. As you are aware, we are giving certificates to participants who are present during the class. So please sign your attendance. The participants attending all the five webinar sessions will be awarded the certificate of completion of part one. And the participants who will be attending part two, the two hands-on workshop in February and March, 2021, and finishing all the assignments, will be awarded the certificate of having finished the certificate course of bamboo application technology by CGBMT School of Simple Living. We had introduced three assignments, one each from product design, street furniture design, and prefab structures. We have shared them with the guidelines along with the timelines. These are in the form of three competitions for which you have to register. You can do the project in groups of two or three. They will be judged by some 
of the best people in the field. So do your best. As the masterclass is coming to an end, our, participant, our, our participants will, must complete the assignments in order to receive the course completion certificate. I kindly request all the participants to make, kindly make a note of this and follow up with the assignments and the competitions. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Now, we have an eminent personality who is propagator of use of bamboo as a construction material and who has successfully implemented in his design and projects. He is from Austria and settled in Thailand. Architect Marcos Rosalie is an architect by passion and a medical doctor by training. Marcos is an architect who learned architecture by observation, especially the microstructure of the human bone and by gathering experience through buildings since his student days. He is a founder of Chiang Mai Life Architects and Chiang Mai Construction, specializing in eco and sustainable architecture, focusing on education, high-end residential and commercial projects. Marcos advocates architecture that warms people's hearts and makes them smile. His approach is based on modern organic design, upgrading the natural material like bamboo with the 21st century engineering knowledge. Marcos is also a co-founder of Panyadin International School, promoting a new design form of education that is value-based. His approach focuses on creativity, closeness to nature, environmental sciences, and sustainability. All this we need to hear from himself to relish. Marcos has been recognized and awarded for his work and contribution. To name a few, Fabra Award Paris in the load-bearing category in 2019, Dezing Award winner London in Civic and Cultural Buildings category, Van Award winner London in Sports in Architectural category, Artisan a plus award in architecture and engineering category and also in sports and recreation category. IDA gold for sustainable architecture and also for the institutional architecture. Was shortlisted for Macau World Architecture Festival, the Golden Lotus International Design Masters Award. IDA top design award for green architecture in 2007. Terra Award Paris for modern earth architecture in 2007. 16. His achievements continues, the list goes on. I take great pleasure in presenting our architect Marcos Rosalí. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and for inviting me to, to this uh, webinar. Um, as you know, bamboo architecture is definitely my passion. And uh, one of the main things, as uh, Professor Habib Khan mentioned before, is that we have to change the image of bamboo from a poor people's material to a material that can uh, present an image just as well as steel or anything else. The problem with bamboo is not so much its functionality because it's a highly functional material, as we all know, it's really the image more than anything else. So what we have been doing in the last years is combining this natural material with, uh, with science on one hand and with uh, modern design. I believe it will be very difficult to change the position of bamboo in this world if we just continue using it as vernacular material as it has been used so far. So, because I have seen many times that the poor people, especially in Thailand, Laos, Burma, are not very keen on bamboo because they grow up with it, build buildings, and in no time the bamboo dust comes down because there's no knowledge which bamboo to choose and how to use it well. So they're not very keen on this material. And the way to change this, in my opinion, is to, as uh, Professor Khan also said, make exemplary buildings 
that are accepted by the upper class, by the middle and upper class, and then the poor people will follow again. Right now, they prefer steel and concrete to any natural materials because of the image. Um, so let me show you and explain to you what I mean with, uh, with these uh, statements. For me, an important other thing is that we have to make buildings that are functional, that are being used. Actually, the, uh, the green part is only the icing on the cake for me. The, the reason why I like bamboo and also earth, all these buildings, the walls are made from earth and the, the roofs and the structural part is bamboo, is because it's a very functional material. And it's, it's very beautiful to, um, to, to work with and the results bring smile on people's faces. You see nowadays in a lot of housing developments, when you go there on a Saturday morning, everybody leaves and goes somewhere else because grass is green or somewhere else. So they have a home where they can't stay. And I think if any architect designs that, then he is lost. For us, what we want to design is places where people invite all their friends over, where they don't need to run away on a Saturday or Sunday, where everybody who comes says, wow, and smiles and wants to be there. So part of our philosophy is that an, a natural material can achieve that actually much easier, can create this connection to the heart much easier than uh, the currently mainly used construction materials. Let's go back to bamboo and, and where the challenge lies in many ways. Well, people are building these small bamboo huts left and right and the images is like this. For us, bamboo has a higher tensile strength than steel. It has a high compressive strength. It is lightweight. You know, it's a tube uh, with intersections. So it's a reinforced tube and it has so many advantages to steel. You know, the, uh, one thing I might, I might take the liberty, Professor Khan, to maybe question it a little bit is uh, the transport of bamboo is one thing, but a lot of materials that are being used in so-called simple houses still is steel and concrete. And even though you can buy it in, in a shop that is only within the span of five kilometers, they were produced in central big factories that are usually also somewhere else. Most countries don't have more or than one or two central steel producing factories. So there's transportation in any material. I hope you don't mind that little uh, Jeff on this one. Anyway, so there's, there's this thing with steel. Bamboo so far has been only used for smaller projects. And if you use it for smaller projects, in my opinion, the image wouldn't change. So we have looked at how to span bigger areas an indoor basketball and football field with bamboo. The, the resurrection of bamboo was in, uh, actually started in South America and Colombia. They have a very big kind of bamboo there called Guadua. And so what they did there is, uh, you know, build everything with the big bamboo. And when you have big bamboo, you reach a limit at about nine meters because then the wall of the bamboo gets too thin to be uh, structurally competent. And after that, you have to make a connection. And that's where your weakness is. The weakness is in the connection. Because if you leverage nine meters, then the force at the end of those nine meters is quite high and it only goes onto the wall of the bamboo at that point. The pole itself is strong, but the connection is weak. So what was done usually so far is pull concrete in and put some steel in and combine it like this. That has very several disadvantages because concrete and bamboo have different thermal capabilities and uh, um, inherently the bamboo will crack when uh, the weather changes. I've tried it and I've seen it many times. So what we changed in the game here is producing engineered prefabricated bundle trusses where we bundle the bamboo and when we bundle it, we can prolong the different individual poles at different points inside the bundle and connect them to the whole length of the bamboo in order to be able to span bigger trusses. 
We do this with this kind of bamboo, which has almost no hole and uh, consists mainly of fibers. Uh, it's a Tyrostachus olivary or Tyrostachus siamensis kind of species. And as you can see here, then we connect it with bamboo nails along the bundles on the length side. Like this, we avoid the connection problem on one little spot that the bigger poles have. Let me just go back a little bit. So, and we design those trusses according to, first, of course, the architectural design like this, but then also send it over to the engineer and let them calculate exactly how many poles we need on the upper or the lower part, how strong the bundle has to be in order uh, to... Um, uh, Akhil, Marcus, we actually uh, can't see your screen. I don't think you have shared your screen. You have not shared your screen, I suppose. Oh, I see. I'm so sorry. I thought I shared the screen already. Or, um, let me see. Maybe it works now. All right. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I apologize. I was very, that was very, uh, stupid of myself. So a no, quick one so at the beginning <laughs> when I was talking about so sorry. I was I was I was talking about houses where people smile, where people live in. I was actually going through these photos all by myself without showing to anyone. Um, I feel quite embarrassed at this. Um, so we use mainly earthen products for the walls because the bamboo doesn't have any thermal uh, um, capability as well as the earthen walls to keep the the heat or the cold out, and we make this the roofs and the other structures from bamboo. Here's a challenger that I was talking about, and here's the you know here's the current solution that is from South America where they have a lot of big bamboos, where with uh, um, concrete and steel connections, and uh, just to you know, not waste your time too much. Here's the engineered prefabricated bundle trusses, and here's like architectural design for them. And then we, you know, we calculate exactly every angle. We use this kind of bamboo, which I said is a you know Tyrostachus olivary kind of bamboo, which has a lot of fibers, very little holes, and, so, and thus the tensile strength of this bamboo is very very high. And then we combine this with two bundles and connect the bundles on the long side of the bamboo and not on the end. Like this, we avoid the problem of the connection that you have with the big poles. So the design concept, well, you have to have the design concept. Here we use the, the lotus flower and then we make models. Always have to make little models with bamboo first to understand what the weakness is. And we lay out the trusses after they have been you know, approved by the engineer on the floor and connect them on the floor on site, they become quite big and heavy. So we use a crane then to, to lift them up into the position where they have to go. And then we connect them the lengthwise to create a bigger space like this. And then, of course, the curves come. I personally, I just love organic forms. I'm not a guy for square and rectangle things. Um, and, uh, and then we use some bigger poles also on the outside, of course, to create a little uh, balcony for, for spectators. Our engineers did wind simulations with the local wind strength and looked how this whole thing will move. And this is where the strength of the bamboo is, right? Everything can move. And that helps because the impact of the wind in the beginning is very high. The winds can be very high speed in Thailand and they rip off whole roofs uh, of other buildings. And when the bamboo can, imp can just give a little bit of way um, and because there are round uh, design features, the wind just goes around the building. We have built square roofs with bamboo and then the wind will just take them off too, but the design also helps to make the whole structure stronger. So and now, um, as you can see, this is used by, by a high-end international school. 
Detailing is very important. You have to go into the detail to make people look at it as a very special thing and not just uh, um, an object from the cheap side. So what, what I want to say here is that bamboo has the potential to go in a completely different sphere than just for small huts that are shabby and fall apart quickly. If we do two things, of course we have to have knowledge how to choose the bamboo, how to treat the bamboo, but our vision has to be bigger than that. Our vision has to be for a material that can provide spaces for the 21st century being. People want clean, bright spaces that lift up their hearts. And bamboo can do that. If we put in our design effort to create a space that looks modern, here I'm a bit of a, of a critic of only using bamboo for vernacular architecture. Because if we just reproduce designs that have already been made, then we don't change the image. And also designs that have been made 100 years ago are not designs that really functionally fit the current needs of the population. So they have to be upgraded. Of course, there will always be vernacular features in all everything we do. Why? Because we've seen it. Once we've seen it, it goes into our subconsciousness and we will automatically use it. But it shouldn't be the main streamline to, uh, to design from the start. So here you see an um, aerial photo of, of our school with the different kinds of phases also. You know, we've learned a lot. We've done different kinds of trusses. We've done V-shaped trusses like these, where we have you know, two central big poles. We combine all our bamboo only with bamboo dowels. Here you see the big dowels, and then these big dowels are again locked in by smaller dowels that go in here, so they can't slip out. Here are the smaller dowels that lock the bigger dowels. And the advantages, of course, that the bamboo doesn't crack if you use the same material. If you use a nail, the bamboo will crack. If you use a screw, the bamboo will crack. But if you use a bamboo dowel, this connection will last very long and bamboo doesn't rust. One of the huge advantages to steel, it doesn't rust. So even if on the seaside, especially on the seaside, that's actually how I started. I had a beach house where I had to repair things all the time and I was looking for better materials than steel and concrete. And that's how I started with bamboo and earth. Then again, these trusses are very heavy, big, so we lift them with a crane on top of the walls. Here we use rammed earth walls, and then we con connect them again on the length side, and it becomes a very strong and at the same time a little bit flexible roof. So for high impact winds, these roofs are much more durable than any normal roofs with little tiles. And with the kind of uh, surfacing we do, it becomes like one skin, so the winds cannot tear off uh, any, any single tile. The tiles become one. Here's a, a meditation hall built on a little mountain. We call it a cathedral because we made a little dome inside that reminds of the big cathedrals. And this, this project was uh, sponsored and commissioned by, by one of the member of the royal family in Thailand. And it has helped us again to increase the profile of the material. Once people like her start adopting this material, others follow much easier. But if we start only building for, for farmers or so, who actually don't even want this, then we don't change anything. Here, this is a, a first a cooking school that was then uh, turned into a restaurant and even though they had to pay more for our product, they made a lot more money than others because of this building attracting their customers, being very Instagrammable and, uh, and giving them a totally different profile. Here we've built a research center at the university where we had to connect a very square chicken breeding facility with a, uh, with a teaching building for the professors and the staff. And so we used, again, we used actually the layout of the traditional farmhouses with a central courtyard and, uh, and made it a bit more playful than it would have usually been. And it's become a center of the university. Children, uh, the, the students like to go there. 
again, it connects to the heart a lot more than any of the other concrete buildings around. And here you see the lecture hall where we show our structural work and, uh, and it becomes part of the beauty of the room. So uh, I think I've talked enough. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I think we have a Q&A session a little bit later. May I turn over to uh, Professor Ganesh or, or Odia? Okay. I have to turn off the screen sharing, I guess, which I don't know how to do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. After hearing architect Marcos, we are all overwhelmed with the knowledge and as a, and are eager, eager to the Changing the image as a low cost economical material to luxurious and uh, impressive material and turn into acceptability, accept, accept, acceptability by the society at large. Now, sir, can we have your video on, please, sir? Excuse me. Okay, sorry, sorry. Now we come to another multifaceted personality, architect Neelam Manjunath. She graduated from the She established Manasaram Architect Bangalore in 1994 and has proven herself as an architect and with the charity training from GST Harvard University and also has a PG diploma in theology for healing the biosphere and well-being of society, use of sustainable material and technology. Work has been published widely and presented in several national and international forums. She is on several national and international She is the CEO, founder, and managing the trustee of Center for Green Building Material and Technology Bank. She is a chairperson of Bamboo Society of India, Karnataka chapter, and also a national council member. She is advisor sustainability and bamboo affairs, Dial Bag Educational Institute, and the national Manjunath Eshwara Award 2005, World Architecture Community Award and World Architecture News Award in 2013. Designer of the Dinesh Verma Award, Arkesia Award for Architecture in 2017, Gold for Sustainable Projects, four awards under Rethinking of Future.
Thank you, Vidya, uh, for this long introduction. Uh, can I share my screen? Please, please. A very good morning uh, to everybody. And um, I think we had a, a very good uh, two presentations, uh, one by architect Habib Khan, uh, very promising, and another by architect Marcus uh, from Chiang Mai, Thailand. Uh, and uh, I think everyone is now quite geared with the bamboo effect. So I'll be taking you to some uh, facts and figures about how, because I have been practicing for over two decades, and uh, uh, since this is a master class, it becomes my duty uh, to, uh, you know, to enlighten the other people as to what are the problems and all if you are using bamboo and what are the advantages and how, why we should be using bamboo. Actually, in the last four uh, master classes, we have talked about why bamboo. But in this one, I am talking about specifically bamboo for the buildings. And there is a difference between building with bamboo and bamboo buildings. I will just come to that. The other four, three, four uh, steps that I will be taking through my uh, uh, you know, presentation. Uh, why bamboo is, I think, uh, uh, when uh, the, uh, what do you say, a new, uh, 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 interest in bamboo came and that was uh, it was because uh, we wanted to take bamboo and other kind of uh, local materials as a sustainable uh, there's some problem with my presentation it's auto going i think i will just take it like this one by one uh, so uh, as we are aware or uh, you know that the co2 emissions from the building sector is a uh, you know is a bigger problem and in some of the countries it can go up to more than 50% uh, so but what is the green building sector whatever it is doing as you can see is a very small uh, green building 5.7% whereas the emissions that we are actually doing is more than 43% so scientists and architects and researchers wanted to look for materials and processes which would be less energy consuming. And that's when the interest in uh, things like mud and bamboo uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, actually was uh, actually started. And um, uh, these are the, I mean, different kind of problems that we have been facing. There's global warming, there's hunger, and, and because all these things because of that. And bamboo is capable of achieving many things as we have uh, discussed in the last four uh, master classes. So I will come to one another major factor, which is the safety in built environment, which probably is not so much as discussed, uh, you know, which is, and, and if we, uh, if you're not aware, this is supposed to be a fundamental right in the United Nations framework, the buildings has to be, uh, you know, safe, and the buildings with bamboo are generally built in disaster prone areas. Uh, across the world for several, uh, you know, like uh, uh, for for a long time, but with the new advent of the new materials, which everyone has been promoting and propagating as very strong materials against these kind of materials, we everyone switched over to something, uh, you know, something like concrete and uh, steel. And as you can see, that has really not worked. Uh, you know, you can see these uh, pictures here and the uh, casualties that I, I am showing here is much, much higher when the buildings are building materials and the design is not in line with how the actually you are supposed to be de designing for the climate, not just copying or, or, or something like one solution fits all. 
when you're working with the natural material, it has to be a little different. And uh, there's another problem which we have is the housing deficit, which we know is in, in actually in the uh, uh, most part of the, you know, uh, you know, of the South Southeast Asia, Africa, and I'm, I mean, I mean, more on the Eastern and the Southern part of the world. And that's where bamboos grow a lot. If you see this uh, uh, particular uh, image, uh, you can see the distribution of bamboo in the upper one, and you can see the population density. And I also show you one more, uh, uh, you know, kind of a table, which tells you about the population density, the housing deficit, disasters, and the distribution of bamboo, which actually takes us to that bamboo is and could be a solution uh, to the problem of solving this crisis because we have to take uh, most of the construction which is going to happen is going to happen in this part of the world and uh, which is like Asia and Africa and South America as you can see we need here and we have bamboos here and so if we are able to somehow uh, get bamboo to be accepted on and elevate bamboo to a status where this can actually be used by the common man then we would have solved the problem from where we actually started exploring bamboo as an alternative bending material. And that purpose should always be kept in mind when we are trying to approach bamboo uh, for our building process and even for other things, but yeah, building definitely in a big way. And this also brought, brings us to the distribution of bamboo in India, which is like uh, we have the Northeast, all eight states together is about 28% as we, I think they are the, but they are not the only places where you have bamboo. As you can see, bamboo is quite distributed everywhere else. And there are different kind of bamboos which actually happens in other parts of the country also and other parts of the world, which is not exactly what is, uh, you know, uh, being put in, in by the various designers and architects. But in our traditional knowledge, it has been being used uh, you know, for time immemorial in different kinds of structures. And since there was not so much of transportation available at that point of time, uh, actually people had a way of, uh, uh, you know, as to, uh, to use bamboo uh, for their bamboo and other, I would say, local materials uh, for construction or construction and usage. And so there are different kind of technologies which are available uh, in different, but, but there's another thing, you know, the look of these uh, uh, buildings when you actually see is uh, uh, more like huts. I think as uh, uh, Akhil Marcus was speaking and even Akhil Habib Khan was speaking, but this, these are not the only types of houses and uh, which uh, bamboo actually can, uh, uh, you know, uh, produce, which I will be taking you through to, uh, if you can, uh, you can see this, uh, these uh, top buildings here. This is done by, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is done very recently, and this has got a lot of bamboo. So they, and this is in a in a desert, and they, they have a very different way of using it. And the left hand corner, what you see is it from Kerala, which is like the uh, you know uh, the southern part, and on the right side is from the Nagaland, which is from the northeast. So they are different kind of, um, you know, because it's a natural material. The vocabulary of the material is very different in different climatic zones. And that needs to be respected when we are using this kind of uh, uh, materials, which is very important. And when we see all this, you know, about the, about, uh, uh, the uh, global warming and things, so bamboo is capable of achieving soil and moisture conservation because these are all architect systemic to the architectural practice that we have to actually use. And that is why I, you know, all this actually shows why we should be using bamboo, uh, you know, in our in our buildings. And we actually have uh, uh, yeah. there's something wrong with my. Uh, excuse me, there's something wrong with my presentation. Somehow it's going. Uh, so bamboo is a woody grass. I will just quickly go through, as I think it's already told, so I will not go into it. And actually in India and this part of the world, it is actually locally available. Most of the towns and cities have a bamboo bazaar, which actually take, uh, you know, uh, get bamboo from the nearby areas. I think uh, as architect Marcus was speaking, 
I am also of the of the this thing that there are uh, places where these kind of things are available, and so the transportation actually is much lesser than the other building materials. It is also ever ready to use, and that's why probably I think it was one of the earliest materials used by man. In because in spite of the strength and hard. Hardness of the skull, it can be cut very easily uh, with a stone, even with a stone axe. So even simple tools and labels is required for processing and usage. It is very light and hollow. So the and and with that, it is stiffened at the nodes, which makes it highly flexible. It's more like you have these uh, you know ties when you have a column. You have these ties at different locations to make uh, to a different uh, spacing to make it more strong. and bamboo has that naturally the natural ties which are the nodes that we have and this makes it also bamboo suitable for dynamically balanced buildings because um, natural natural uh, you know disasters when they happen something like a typhoon or some or an earthquake if you don't allow the building if the building is rigid and if you don't allow it to move the buildings will crack so if you use a material like bamboo which and and, and also the design how you design it if you can design in such a way that there is a leverage where the building actually can set off those forces natural forces you will be able to use it in a in a much better manner and your building will be much more safer this also brings me to another topic which has been a lot of discussion bamboo versus steel and i think there are uh, uh, you know a lot of examples as to uh, you know we know that uh, earlier we had several buildings which were used with uh, bamboo as an enforcement and even in recent times there are many uh, buildings not very large buildings i would say but yes but many large buildings is a very small part of the construction most of the construction would be either small houses or there will be medium size medium size of the uh, buildings and in those in those definitely bamboo can replace uh, uh, steel and these are some of the uh, some of the uh, you know this table actually shows uh, the comparison between convention uh, conventional and bamboo reinforced concrete as you can see here uh, the ultimate tensile strength of bamboo reinforced concrete is much much higher so we actually need to know how to use the material we cannot use bamboo like steel and this as uh, it is in the same way that you cannot use mud like cement or concrete so each material has got its own peculiar properties and that needs to be respected when you are actually designing with the material and not try to make it force like another material and that's where most of the uh, problems actually come so there are buildings now being made and i will be sharing my own office which is also reinforced with bamboo so uh, this is this is another factor which has been really raising like a question as to whether bamboo can be used uh, in place of steel yes it can and if yes we also have to actually see several other parameters as i said depending on the physical properties and the mechanical properties of the material so this is a density and the density actually changes these are things which actually make designing with bamboo little difficult because the density varies and i had actually covered it in my last lecture so i will not go in detail but this is what uh, these are some of the properties and so this is directly in connection with building with bamboo and this This is an energy balance table which actually tells you the amount of energy required to produce one unit of building material. And you can see in the case of bamboo, it is it is a minimum. And if you compare it with this here with the steel, uh, you know you can you can see the difference that is there. It's almost 500 times. And if you compare it to aluminium, it is aluminium has it 2,100, so it is even more 700 times more. So these are some of the properties which actually make bamboo a very desirable. material to be explored for uh, uh, as many types of buildings as we can actually use this is also the embodied energy uh, uh, this is another factor and i am showing you some of the mechanical properties that uh, the embodied energy actually uh, as i think akram marcus also was telling it is just not uh, the material of transportation it all uh, energy of transportation it is also with extraction processing transportation energy usage and all these things actually combine to make the embodied energy of the material which is actually used at one point of time when you are constructing the building and that that you cannot change during the lifetime of the building so so in that way bamboo actually makes a very good alternative to other building materials the structure of bamboo i think we are you already uh, told about the nodes so this is the way we have the structure of the bamboo 
uh, and that is why it is flexible at the same time it is strong and there's another point which i would like to make is like the difference between wood and bamboo wood has a, a soft core soft uh, part outside and the hard core inside so you have to actually process process wood to make it usable for your product but in case of bamboo the hard part is outside and the softer part is inside so the harder part is actually um, you know protecting the inner part so if we are able to do a proper treatment as we have discussed already in our earlier master class we will be able to use these in our um, you know in different kinds of uh, usages these are some of the multi story buildings that i would like to show this is actually from bangalore and believe me this building is 200 years old so there are different kinds of uh, actually uh, usage you don't always bamboo buildings don't not, need not look like a bamboo building only because there's no other material which is actually you know you have only uh, only mud only bamboo only steel only cement we cannot do there has to be a composite thing so and only in 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 when we do that we actually will be able to mainstream the material so this is a very uh, uh, you know prominent use of and very prevalent use of uh, i have seen this so many houses how bamboo was used as you can see in the ceiling and then it was boarded and then there is a first floor slab over it i have been visiting this house for last 20 years um, almost every second third year i have been visiting and this is in a very good condition these are some of the buildings from the himachal pradesh where they uh, uh, do this kind of uh, you know be bamboo beams and they have a first floor so bamboo is being used even in this kind of manner and this is a very traditional technique this is nothing new about it in this case the bamboo is not for reinforcement but very recently they have started using the bamboo splits in the reinforcement otherwise it used to be actually a mud slab mud and bamboo slab that's how it used to be uh, it used to be done before uh, i would uh, quickly uh, make a, a point about building with bamboo versus bamboo architecture and this is something which uh, you may find it little uh, uh, you know uh, you know little confusing but there is a uh, uh, you know this bamboo term just like the dot com or a green or sustainable word is being used by architects and designers across the world simply to get mileage and a green wash and this is something which is which is really harming and hurting the bamboo sector the bamboo buildings or building with bamboo sector whatever you call it now why it is so i will just go uh, to two three points here now one of the biggest problems with bamboo it has been the temporariness tag that bamboo can only be used for temporary buildings and the 99% of the so called bamboo architecture which people are doing right now you know very fast and is actually contributing to that tag another tag that bamboo has is of poor man's timber now the usage of bamboo to make it desirable and sexy and to promote business has been catching the attention of the media and used by developers and architects and designers to promote business in the name of promoting a bamboo sector which is really great on one hand but on the other hand it is it is definitely promoting business but it is not at all the very purpose which i think used in the uh, which i told in the beginning that because of the global warming and because of the construction required in this part of the world we are exploring sustainable building materials and bamboo is one promising material because it is also abundantly available but if we go with this kind of a model to make it really very you know uh, very fashionable and and very uh, desirable now all the people who are who are poorer for whom we have to uh, find the housing uh, you know solutions will actually sell their bamboos to the richer nations and they will again go back to use cement and steel to their of their for their houses thereby completely defeating the purpose of bam of you know promoting bamboo for the building sector there's another example that i would like to give here because i think uh, uh, akhil habib had spoken about uh, the uh, national bamboo mission putting some of the srs one of the one of the items in there is something called bamboo wood which has got no property left of uh, bamboo in the wood and it is frightfully expensive now how as a person who has been trying to promote bamboo in that way would would will be able to use that material and not just use i would say how do you uh, you know actually justify the usage of such material in the name of bamboo so this is something which is also hurting 
uh, you know the the profession and uh, you have you know big big uh, places being uh, used uh, bamboo wood and all that because the only big big corporations government bodies and all this because the common man will never be able to use it and the most of the such uses of the material in design has exposed elements because it makes it very eye catching and saleable but bamboo being a natural material cannot be completely exposed to weather and such buildings will have much shorter life or a very high maintenance cost one of the two and this will require very high cost of you know in terms of treatment finishing and maintenance and regular maintenance to look to for the maintain the look and also the strength of the material this is making the work of people who are seriously trying to promote bamboo to mainstream it in the building sector very much at risk so you have this is like another case of capitalism taking over the green building green movement or the sustainable movement so in the name of making money and in the name of promoting economy the whole purpose of using bamboo is is actually being uh, you know it is it is it will actually completely backfire and this has been the basic principle with which i have been trying to do uh, my practice and usage of bamboo i'll quickly run through some i think everyone knows about uh, these structures across the world but i will just uh, run it through and i've also used in uh, uh, everyone has shown in the previous presentations uh, so i will just run it through these are some of the hotels this is from the airport yeah this is another uh, point in question uh, you know in discussion that i would like to show this is the madrid airport where this drogas has used uh, bamboo processed bamboo strips in the in the interior of the bamboo for the ceiling and right now till now this is the largest uh, you know usage of bamboo in the largest uh, public uh, you know domain and area the second one is in bangalore it's coming up in bangalore and um, som they are the architects i'm i'm on a public forum but i would like to make this point som had approached us in about 2017 uh for the usage of bamboo for a project in bangalore and about for 2 to 3 months we exchanged uh, uh you know mails and they had uh, they had wanted information about the fire and all other things and the kind of bamboo available they had sent me a, a preliminary drawing whether it will be feasible to do and how it has to be done after that i did not hear from them so i and they did not tell that it is for the airport so i was i did not know they said they will get back to me once the project is approved which never happened i mean the project got approved they never got back to us and so in la last uh, in 2018 uh, you know when i was in beijing for one of the uh, bark uh, conference uh, i got this uh, that you know this particular uh, project has been uh, allotted uh, and som is doing the project and this is the we are using bamboo out there uh, from one of the uh, you know uh, companies which got the tender and so this is something and i have been trying to i will be showing you later i have been trying to do this for the projects and the government of karnataka and other people have approved projects when they come from outside but when we have people here uh, who have been trying to uh, you know for the other projects the things are still in process this is one point i just wanted to make and i think this really needs to be speculated actually how to really go about it there are some other uh, this is also by simon uh, village and uh, uh, these are some other this is a hangar and these are some other and this is something our very own uh, bamboo roofing sheets corrugated bamboo roofing sheets a very good product developed by indian institute of uh, uh, you know indian plywood research institute in again situated in bangalore i started my journey with them it's a very good product but unfortunately we have only one factory in india so far so we don't have much of supply which has been really uh, uh, you know Uh, we have not been able to use it to a large extent as much as we would like to so these are some of the other things and i think we already uh, last time we spoke about this i'll come down to my own uh, buildings uh, which i have been trying to do as an as, and as i discussed i always thought of using bamboo to solve this problem uh, in my country and on this part of the world and uh, our first project was in 1999 uh in the in the raj bhavan and this was a dilapidated school and this was like something why i'm just showing a few of my projects which were like uh, milestones uh you know in 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 my journey with this particular material and uh, this was a dilapidated building which we refurbished and we retrofitted and we used bamboo to do a lot of it and it was finished in one month and 
And the kind of freedom and the kind of uh, feel that I had on the site with this particular material, really, uh, I got hooked to the material. And as you can see, even at that time, uh, I, am, I have incorporated bamboo into the building with all other materials. It's not like to singling it out, you know. Uh, so it, it has a very different kind of, I have always had a very different kind of approach when I was talking, when I was uh, trying to use bamboo. You can see these bamboo crete walls here. And you can see this bamboo corrugated sheet. This is bamboo board. And you have a counter, which is here, which I uh, used with a uh, reinforced, uh, uh, again, uh, screed. And over that, we have put a board. And so that's, and this is, I was told, I have not been to the Raj Bhavan from the last few years. I was told that it is still, still existing. And this was 99. And then we had this, another uh, project given by the same Plywood Institute, IPIRPI. In the Plywood Institute, which are doing a lot of work in the in the bamboo sector, and it's a two-bedroom house which was told, which was given to me to do, uh, so that people can relate to bamboo for making houses in the urban areas also and the rural areas also, and said so this is a usable kind of a thing. Again, as you if you see here, this is not all bamboo kind of a thing. This is like a uh, this is like a interior. It has bamboo. It has other materials also, and we had a cement plaster in it. We had windows made of plantation wood and this is how the whole thing was so from the beginning we had this approach of trying to uh, you know use bamboo uh, for a very uh, you know a responsible kind of a, uh, design and responsible kind of projects and as uh, uh, as you can see the bam bamboo uh, gives the building a very different kind of a, uh, you know a hue and a feel you don't really need to do a lot of interiors with it because it has got its own charm. This was another landmark that we had with us. It's a prefab house, which we uh, completely built in Bangalore and sent to Rome uh, for a client, Mr. Lunadi. Uh, even now he's using it. And even now this year also, we got a, uh, you know, a New Year greetings from him that he's doing well and he's really, uh, this is the house and it's completely, it was uh, uh, done as a prefab. Uh, including everything, including everything. Uh, this is another uh, project that we have done for the 2004 tsunami, and it was done as a, uh, you know, shelter, you know, uh, for rehabilitation. Unfortunately, we lost in the discussion at the uh, in the in the planning commission uh, to do this. And this whole the whole uh, the way we did the project was that we went only for the initial discussions, and then we went to train them. And then we had one engineer and with all these local people, because they had a lot of expertise with themselves. We, we, they have done this house with only one engineer out there. Uh, I mean, and, and this is the beauty of it. But, and this could actually have been a very good uh, example and a way of giving a livelihood security and some jobs and things to people while they are actually in the transition period after the, the, after the uh, disaster. But uh, we actually uh, lost that battle. We lost the battle even you know, when we were asked to do it for uh, Uttarakhand, uh, Uttarakhand uh, disaster also flood that happened. And um, uh, it would be good if we could actually use it for uh, you know, se several other uh, you know, disaster prone areas. But, but I'm also happy to tell you that the organization with whom we did this was Steed, Steed India. And after this, they have been using bamboo in various locations for disaster uh, uh, management. And I'm really happy to uh, say that. Uh, it was Manu, Manu Gupta, who actually attended one of my conferences and then came to us. And, and he has taken over from there. And that was the year was 2004 and five. Now, uh, these are the years that I'm just trying to tell you how the process and how the development of different kinds of, uh, you know, uh, discussions uh, that we used to have with different kind of people. And all through this, I was, uh, uh, you know, lecturing. I was trying to train the people because you don't get people to train. I didn't even have sometimes architects in my office because they didn't want to work on buildings with bamboo. We didn't have uh, carpenters. We didn't have uh, contractors who wanted to do these kind of works. And um, so this is another, uh, since it was an MNC and they wanted a cafeteria, it's a very different kind of vocabulary. So bamboo actually is a very versatile building material. Uh, and, and can be used in various kinds of ways. Uh, so our our uh, um, 
uh, this thing was that whenever i approach somebody and told that okay we will use can you use bamboo and they would say can you show me somewhere where it has been used so my this thing was let's let's change the vocabulary of bamboo the structural systems in every project that i can lay my hands on so that people behind me have got lot of precedence to use this material and that's what i have i have been doing so far in in most of my uh, projects Uh, this was another landmark project uh, because we got our first national award with this with the use of bamboo and this had got several components this is the uh, solar house that we have which is uh, if you can see the interiors everything is made from bamboo and this on the other uh, uh, structures on the on the site and we got an uh, it was 2005 when we got this award for this uh this is another project and this is now very recently this is a bridge we did about 50 feet uh, uh, long in 2006 2007 and uh, uh we were actually uh, uh uh we were working with dda delhi development authority and the biodiversity foundation university of delhi the three organizations this is the yamuna biodiversity park in delhi and a very uh, this is a very recent picture i think just about i think 4 3 4 years back and uh, it is got lost slightly tilted to one side and i had a site visit just about a week ago uh, when they told me to uh, repair the work but this is working very well in such kind of condition also these are the other structures that have been done the gazebo has taken a little bit of this thing but you know the, the this is the common toilet which is doing again very well so these are like proper usage by the public of bamboo will promote bamboo and mainstream bamboo in the long run and that has been uh, my way how do you incorporate it in the daily you know the in the buildings that we use daily in our daily lives whether it's urban area semi urban area or 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 a rural area so these are very different uh, kind of uh, approach uh, that we really need to have especially in country like india where we have lot of this thing this was a competition which we won and i this was the first time i tried to have a very uh, i was bold enough and i we won the we, i mean we got we were runners up in this one and later the project also has been installed but this was not built to do a shell with bamboo i started really working because a very uh, uh, you know a material uh, which is very light and so when you again as i said we want to mainstream it we have to have risky pre inventing the different kinds of usage that we can actually have so across the world people are trying to look for shells which are very light mm -hmm. and i am really fascinated by shells and i think bamboo is one of the materials which actually we can use uh, in a very big way uh, and this is the museum that we did in 2006 and uh, doing very well and this was done along with sd sharma and associates of chandigarh in palampur and i think it's the only bamboo museum right now in the country and it's in excellent condition as you can see so this is all longevity of such projects actually tells a lot about the material as to how you should actually you be using it uh, rather than actually going only for a uh, for a show or something like that these are looking good aesthetically also and they are also useful next is my house this is my house and uh, this i think was a uh, opportunity for me with experiments galore i kept on doing it one over the, after the other these are the actual pictures with this is mud and bamboo completely in a urban area and uh, an upmarket house um, you know it's a it's a four five bedroom house actually and all this is mud and there's lot of uh, walls on the first floor they all of bamboo but they don't look like bamboo i mean that's how uh, you know and, and you can see the span that we have is a large roof that i have which is almost 4000 square feet which is made with bamboo you can see here and maybe uh, you can see more in the other so the bamboo i've used as you can see in several kinds of uh, places in my in my house you know even for sun shades and this is a very light bridge which can take uh, even my load uh, you know you can see we, uh, here over the swimming pool there are some other uh, areas this is this is the roof as i was telling this is look at the 20 feet tall uh, bamboo column and that's the roof that i was talking about with uh, uh, bamboo below and all the, there is no steel uh, in there uh, in in these columns or anything and we have this uh, roof which is 4000 square feet as you saw here uh, it goes uh, it goes from here to completely to here and has a span of more than uh, this is the column if you see here 
a span of about 30 feet asymmetrical loading. These are, this is bamboo uh, flooring. These are the bamboo walls that I talked about. And they are fireproof. Let me tell you, because my son tried to, uh, you know, put something on fire in the room and it went onto the wall and, and it got, uh, we came to know that it's fireproof completely. And uh, these are some of the more interiors, as you can see. So you using bamboo and mud to make a upmarket house like any other urban material or whatever you are talking, we are talking about, mm -hmm. it can be used. This was one example that I wanted to set uh, uh, with this. And since I was the owner of the house also, so I had a full freedom. At the same time, this is another house. I mm -hmm. mean, the photograph is not there. Uh, it's the same campus that I have made. Uh, from 2010, so after all those experiments, and these experiments as I was talking to you about, may I request the audience to put themselves on mute? Uh, the, the shell, because my house also has that shell on the, on the roof of it, and uh, none of the structures actually wanted to get their hands dirty at that point of time in 2007 to help me with the testing and all that. So I did my own testings, which I think the last, uh, in the last masterclass, I showed how the testing was done. And after finishing that, I had, I had some debris with which I made my office. And this was the process. You design, you test, and you document. You design, test, and document. And that's what my office is all about. This is another shell that I have done, uh, the free form. And a very simple, uh, you know, uh, simple uh, principle of uh, the structure which is the, uh, you know, this uh, platform, fishing platforms that we have, uh, you know, the traditional fitting fishing platforms. And this is the structure, as you can see, it's a free form and only uh, supported on a single bamboo beam. If one bamboo, it takes the load of the whole, uh, whole structure, you can see at this point. Uh, and this is the interior, and you can see these are all, there's no interior here, and this is all structurally relevant, uh, you know, uh, components uh, and uh, we had two people two organizations who wanted to test it uh, and we are hoping that in the in future we will be having much more structural engineers to test these as to how they are working this is also around 11 years old now uh, built it in 2010 2011 and these are you can see the spans it is more than 15 feet here uh, with this slab and this slab is reinforced with bamboo and it also has concrete, which is which is which has got uh, these bamboo fibers uh, to to enhance the bonding between the cement concrete and the uh, and the, uh, you know the reinforcement. Uh, in 2013, uh, this is the project that I think I I was a little uh, talking about when talking about the airport. It's a metro station, which is to Bangalore metro station. Uh, Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation, I have presented in 2013 and still, still under process. Uh, we are waiting for the approval. We are hoping at least one station we will be able to do. And this again uses the weaving, weaving, uh, you know, the weaving of bamboo and the, and the strength that it can have in a kind of a particular shape when you put it. And that's the, that's the uh, you know, principle on which uh, this particular design is there. I had given them three different option, this was another one. And uh, this is another one much more conventional, uh, but the other two, so I'm just hoping someday I will be able to, uh, uh, we will be able to have it. And I am hope the authorities are listening. So after the Bangalore airport, I am hoping that, you know, we will be able to uh, have those. This was an international competition in Budapest that I had uh, participated. Uh, uh, this was a, a Hungarian house of music. And you might say that bamboo is not available there. It is available. And these are, they are more like reeds, very thin bamboos. And they are used for flutes. And I, I saw at least 100 kinds of flute in their music museum. And so I decided to have these, these, are, these walls are called uh, music walls, walls of music, uh, you know, in, in, in the museum. And they produce music. You can actually hear them uh, when you put an earphone to that. So this was like a wall of music. There's a new concept that we had put in here. Unfortunately, the competition was abundant. Uh, so, uh, you know, this was, this was another um, uh, project. Again, it's unbuilt, but I, I have put it here just to uh, caution everyone as to how you're supposed to approach people. This is a triple IT, and this is 80 feet 
a long bridge that I wanted to do with a minimum amount of bamboo and the thing and the, and I had the guts and I had the I had the confidence that it can be actually done. But this total uh, total project was thirteen lakhs against the huge project that was that is on some hundred crores or something of the other whole triple IT. So they never thought that bamboo and an architect like me uh, who comes with uh, a project at the age of 50 with a 13 lakh project, what kind of capability that architect actually can have. And this is one problem that I have been facing with several of my, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I have been facing even now. I mean, I think many architects face different kinds of problems. But when I'm talking about bamboo, this is what you are, you are, you are actually looked at. But at such an age, if you are doing such small, small projects of 13 lakhs or one crore or two crores, you definitely are not probably worth uh, considering for larger projects like urban design and you know big big projects. So this is something you know they will tell you. Okay, the other architect is doing something uh, all the project. Can you do a small clubhouse for me, or can you do a pergola for me? I mean that was that has been also some sometimes it has come to me. So this is something which you will face in case you want to really pursue this kind of uh, you know this kind of a work, and you have to endure that. If you are really have you are really on a mission, you really have to endure that. So I'll quickly run through other project. Now this is one housing project where we are using bamboo, not in too much as I would have wanted, but yes, about twenty percent we can say. And uh, in different, this is about a hundred hundred uh, houses project, which is in Bangalore and very next to my uh, office. And this is a, a community center that we have up. So after 2015, again, there are very different kind of projects. Things started really moving. I, I had also really matured with experimenting with different kinds of things. So I had I was approached by several people. One such project is Avirala, which is actually, uh, we, we have got the tender and uh, now the designs have been actually uh, sort of approved. And we are just hoping that the construction, the construction was going on, I think because of, thanks to COVID, I think, it was stopped and also Andhra elections. Uh, this is in Tirupati, so I'm just hoping that it will uh, come through later. This is one example. This is also, a, 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 we had made it as a competition entry, but this is also a, a, a wishful project for me as a meta slum, informal housing in the middle of the city, made of the same materials what they have been using in their uh, villages. And that is, if you can see the kind of configuration that I have kept, you have one core, which is made of uh, you know, steel and concrete, which is the service core. But other than that, all other things is all mud and bamboo or informal materials and coupled with all other kinds of things like you know, you know, net where you can actually produce uh, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, 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 vegetables and you have these uh, small, small uh, windmills and things like that where you can have your light and solar panel in each, each one of the units. And we give them only the way we do in Ashria housing, we give, give them a basic house and everything else has to be done by them. So that was the concept with which this has been done. And this is a actually live location in Bangalore for which it has been designed. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I just hope this also comes sometimes it comes for, uh, uh, you know, comes through. This is uh, another project that we were approached for, Silpa Ramam in Anantapur, and this is underway. And it's already been approved, and we are uh, at the uh, working drawing stage now. And uh, I think for some of the structures, the work is going to start. Uh, you know, this is a mud and bamboo uh, building. As you can see, this is a food court uh, with that uh, waving uh, bamboo. This thing. This is a uh, conference center with the hotel, and this is a five-star resort uh, and the and the entertainment center with the project. So it's a it's a, a fairly large project for me, small project for other bigger architects, but uh, it's pretty good. And I think this could set an example of uh, you know uh, where bamboo can be used for multi-purpose uses and different kinds of ways and different kinds of uh, you know, these things. This is another experiment that India Pavilion we did at the World Bamboo Workshop in 2019. And this is a, just a eight days work, if you can, if you will please, and starting from the beginning to the end, and uh, this is a shell that we, it's almost like nine meters from one end to the other and the other side. And uh, we had all kinds of participants from all over the world. Uh, you know, we were invited uh, to do this pavilion. And I think this can be utilized for very large structures, the same principle. 
so we generally take it uh, uh, take these opportunities to actually use bamboo for uh, you know experiment with bamboo in a way uh, that you know this can actually be used for proper structures instead of only doing it as installations uh, this is another project which we are uh, is also approved and we are looking forward to now starting it uh, on the ground and uh, this is a blip center in bangalore it's a retrofit plus a uh, new construction uh, where we are using bamboo in a very big way here also and this is a project which is very recently finished pegasus institute of excellence 2019-20 this was a circular hall this was a has a rectangular hall and uh, we have this as the uh, amphitheater that we actually retrofitted with a shell roof again out here now i think uh, with the projects these are the, some of the projects that i see i have been showing i'll we did some work in mainstreaming the bamboo sector separately. Other than this, we have been participating in competitions, and we have been also uh, holding holding uh, not competitions, exhibitions and competitions. And we also were invited for the Venice Biennale 2016, where we presented our work. Uh, and the exhibition was for three or uh, for six months, and uh, we participated there. This is another survey that I have done in 2018 uh, from CGBMT. Arc Daily was a partner for a survey, global survey for mainstreaming bamboo as a building material. And this is what uh, I was speaking to uh, uh, the President uh, Council of Architecture to actually uh, uh, give it to him, actually uh, share it with him as to what needs to be done to make bamboo as a uh, mainstream building material uh, in the building sector. So this was something which uh, uh, we, uh, we really wanted to uh, you know, share. There are many other uh, things which is like courses and all that, which I think I've already spoken in the earlier master class, so I will not repeat that. And this is what uh, uh, you know I have in mind, which is like a pedagogy for architecture for simple living. I think architecture needs to be taught in a very different manner. And so here I'm taking the context of bamboo, but the principles actually remain the same. And this actually see a very uh, uh, relevant uh, uh, photograph where you have a senior architect, you have a uh, a carpenter, a bamboo artisan from Assam, you have somebody from Jharkhand uh, who is into gardening, and uh, you have different, different, this is a mason, a different, different kind of people trying to solve a problem as to how to do things. So it's like a, it's like a, it's like interdisciplinary learning. So people who have other skills, they don't have a university certificate, but those, uh, we have to have this uh, recognition of the prior learning, and then it has to be introduced into the architecture of the informal sector that we have, and it's really not being given enough, uh, uh, you know, this thing. And that's why I think we have we have uh, young architects who do not know when they come out and they find they are absolutely lost when they go to a site or something like that. But if they are given more training uh, in uh, you know association with such people, that would really work. So. The, Pertaining to that, I, we have uh, been working with Dalbag University from 2003 onwards, uh, and this was one uh, structure that we made as a, a proof of concept to start some courses. And uh, this is a proposed bamboo center at the university. And I was, I'm happy to tell that in 2011, we rolled out the PG certificate program and the certificate program in bamboo application technology, um, along with uh, Dalbag University. And it has been running so far. Now we have modular courses also that we are running uh, in several centers uh, on bamboo application technology, which is a nine-week course. Uh, so these are the projects with Dalba University has been taking bamboo to a very different level. And in most of its, and it has got around 90 study centers across the country. So at different ICT centers, we have been they have we have been doing structures uh, with bamboo to showcase the potential of the. So this was in Agra, um, in Uttar Pradesh. This is in Amritsar, and this pro this was done in 18 days. The whole structure from this kind of a condition to this kind of a condition, including everything else, as you can see. This is the interior, as you can see, finished interior. Everything was done in about 18 days. You know, just trying to tell people how, and they have got a crash done for small children in their university campus. Uh, which this was also done by us and executed by uh, CGBMT and Aditi Construction. Uh, these are some of the other photographs, and they're very typical. And there's one uh, I would like to emphasize here. I always try to use local bamboo, which is in the in the local market, and try to as much as possible. And then I change my design. So I generally have an inventory of kind of bamboo available, shape, size, and then 
suit my design to that rather than trying to have a design and then try to import bamboo or from uh, you know several kilometers away most of the time we do that so, sometimes we don't have at that time we 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 also forced to do it but i would say that in 99% of the time i have used local bamboo uh, in the university we also doing this conference centers we have two conference halls and these are the these are under construction uh, this is the inter this is one of the i think probably uh, when belt probably will be one of the largest uh, conference halls uh, in the country at least in india uh, it is it's around 8000 square feet 8 or 9000 square feet and uh, it is got the elements of architecture which agra this is in agra so agra can have this other one uh, second one is slightly smaller it's around 6000 square feet and it's almost actually complete and the finishing work is actually going on so this is the uh, kind of work that uh, we are doing with them uh, we have another center for them that is in madhya pradesh which we are doing a workshop building for them in bamboo where we have uh, proposed uh, bamboo reinforcement in the columns and the beams and uh, this is uh, about to start construction the tender has been called and we are looking forward to doing it this is in uh, madhya pradesh in the hada district and uh, these are some of the other uh, in activities in jalbag so they are really taking it in a very big manner and uh, this is one project we had done with uh, uh, you know uh, in uh, with uh, rs school of architecture denmark and fear college trichy and um, uh, as you can see it's always hands on is what i am looking at and we use bamboo and areca palm plates so we also have been uh, trying to explore other materials in, in relation with bamboo this is uh, uh, i think probably the last project that i'm showing and this is a shell with not just bamboo but also with mud mud and bamboo and mud is modified mud and um, uh, this was a presentation that i did last year um, and, and and this is the way people have worked as again you can see here i would like to say this guy who is reading a drawing is actually again that guy from jharkhand which i spoke about this is a absolutely a new uh, labor this is an architect and he is a ngo worker and here also you see very different kind of people this is myself and this is the uh, owner of a uh, uh, you know art uh, you know art studio and museum uh, we have the uh, director of madhya pradesh bamboo mission we have the dfo and uh, we have the dfo uh, this thing and we have architect uh, vivek sabarwal director apj college of architecture so a very different kind of set of people and this guy sukhanandi uh he has done all the artwork which we have tried to incorporate in the building if you can see here all this artwork which is happening here has been actually done by him and he taught that to several people so this is a very typical art in madhya pradesh uh, uh which is uh, where did they use bamboo and they have a very special kind of mud with which they plaster it and that i have utilized in my uh, design in this with this i end my presentation and uh, i think i have made my point that as a material building materials uh, and availability strength and vulnerability comparison it actually demonstrates that it's a very strong competitor and and, and a very better good alternative for uh, with when the parameters of sustainability economics aesthetics and social aspects are compared and this is again my dream project we are hoping that we will be able to start the project soon enough and these are the goals I have miles to go before I sleep. Mainstreaming bamboo in the building sector, type of kacha buildings to be removed, bamboo in the curriculum for building sciences, bamboo in SR, and bamboo for achieving the SDG goals. Thank you so much. And this is the Maihar building. Thank you, architect. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, I, I'm done. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, before uh, I request you to. wrap up the session we would like to have a, a, a quick question ask uh, question answer session architect markus presented his large interesting structures with uh, big spans which has created especially in the hospitality sector and i am sure you all have questions on mine now you have seen lot of projects which uh, architect nilam has carried out already with a lot of questions have poured in hence we shall have 15 minutes question answer session you can address uh, to architect marcos and architect nilam they will be able to answer uh, your questions now 
And if you have any specific question to architect Habib Khan, you can please uh, mail them and send, uh, send the questions. We will uh, take it forward. Uh, thank you. Now, uh, let us have the question answer session. And I request architect Marcos and Neelam to please uh, answer the questions. Yes, sure. Sure, we're happy to. No problem. Yeah. Professor uh, Sh uh, Shukumar, uh, will you take it forward? Written questions have come. Anybody wants to, to uh, uh, I think uh, I request uh, Professor Shukumar to please raise the questions. Maybe, uh, Vidya, you can read the questions and we can, uh, maybe, that, do you think that would be better or whatever? Yeah, I think the questions, uh, can I, I can also... But... Hello, sir. Yeah. I'm Kasi Rajan, architect. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I, I have a simple question, probably. I do not know if it's simple or not, but uh, uh, let me just say. Okay. Uh, what I uh, have a question as is basically uh, I was like going through uh, details for fire retardant for bamboos and I came across this material called graphene. Uh, like is any of the architect who presented now uh, and the experts in the architect uh, have worked on this material called graphene as a coating, which is natural process because traditionally we were having this oil lamps and uh, these dupe at home in Indian houses in the villages. I think that becomes a very protective layer for fire retardant. I'm just wondering if that is the methodology to treat bamboo for fire retardant. Uh, because now that uh, there are so many chemicals are being used, uh, just to be more and more sustainable and eco-friendly and to be with the eco-cycle, uh, I'm just asking this question whether uh, is that possible uh, as a material for fire retardant. Thank you. Marcus, you want to you want to go first? Please go ahead. Yeah. So the the um, in our previous master classes, we have actually told uh, talked about this fire uh, uh, treatment and the finishing and the fire part. Uh, one is that the uh, treatment that we are giving uh, to bamboo that itself first makes it uh, to quite an extent uh, fire retardant. That is one. Second thing, bamboo itself, though it is understood and thought to be, uh, you know, catching fire, actually it does not. Uh, again, because the bamboo that we use in the buildings is not dry bamboo. Okay. So if you are not using the right bamboo, so they, it's not one step and it's not one, uh, you know, uh, answer. There are several steps that you have to take in terms of design, in terms of uh, selection of bamboo and the treatment, and then what kind of a maintenance that you want to do. So the, there, are, there are many finishes which are available, which is like whatever you use generally for wood. Suppose you want to make wood uh, fire safe and the similar thing can be also used for bamboo. Okay. So once you have that uh, uh, coating, you know, we have this wax coating, which is on the bamboo. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to make it fireproof, then generally people take it out by uh, sanding it. And after sanding, it can take any of the finishes that you want to put it on. Okay. Okay. So that is that is another another part, and in this one there is one uh, uh, you know uh, expert uh, from CBRI Rudki, Mr. Subir Kumar. He has done a lot of work on this, and uh, as per his research <coughs> and the presentation that he had done, uh, bamboo is as good or as bad as as any other material or steel, especially con consideration to steel when it comes to fire, because steel loses its property very fast once the temperature goes up after a certain extent, whereas bamboo does not, you know, suddenly collapse. So there is a difference, uh, you know, there's a difference in the way the behavior it is. And so in that way, you cannot say that bamboo is more liable to or to to uh, or more uh, dangerous in a fire situation than steel. Okay. And this is proven. This is a proven fact. Okay. Uh, does that answer the question? 
Yes. And I have not used the material that you have told. Yeah. I have not used the material that you have shown, but I would love to, uh, since you have uh, pointed out, I would definitely, because I keep researching and I keep looking for solutions. Uh, okay. Thank you for the suggestion. We would definitely take yes, it sir. Graphene, it's called graphene. It's a, it's a natural process by which there's a layer, I mean, layer that formed by just by oil lamps and the dupe that we have in the home. Uh, basically, the, re yeah. the reason why I asked this question is basically uh, in response to one of the, um, I mean, this material I was suggesting to a college, I mean, school design, uh, primary school design, and uh, they were uh, vehemently opposing this idea of having bamboo in a school. So that is why I was doing a bit of research on how to convince them. Uh, thank you for that uh, reply, and it's wonderful. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marcus, can you, uh, do you want to add anything? My, I think my approach is very similar to architect Neelam's. The additional thing is you can, there's definitely going to be uh, a resistance in the legislation of bamboo in many countries. If we cannot prove that uh, bamboo can withstand fire for a certain amount of time. So I think that there, there's, uh, you see steel has the advantage that it had hundred years of research and millions and millions of dollars in the research. If we have a fraction of this, I'm pretty sure we can come up with some substance <clears throat> that is easily applicable and cheap because these are the two things that will be necessary to make it uh, useful uh, for bamboo to be more fire resistant than it already is. And I think it will be necessary to do that step in order to um, get it past legisl legislative processes easier for bigger span structures, I'm talking. For smaller span structures, that doesn't really apply as much. But, you know, mono ammonium phosphate and, and there's, there's other substances that, that are being worked with right now to improve the fire resistance. Beyond, beyond this, uh, architect Liam already said, you know, if you compare to a normal wooden house, which people for some reason don't, then then we don't need to do anything additional anyway. Thank you. Uh, can we go to uh, Mr. So, Shukumar? Do you have a question? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, afternoon. Ma'am, uh, thanks so much, uh, ma'am, Marcus, and uh, uh, sir, for his presentations. Very insightful. Um, as a practicing architect, ma'am, I would like to know from you, uh, your work has been very inspiring and trend, uh, it's, it's, it's exemplary for all of us. Uh, where does a person like me uh, start? You know, uh, in fact, this is my first uh, participation in the five series because uh, uh, I was not aware of the other parts. But if I want to start immediately, want to start using it in my work, uh, should I start with a book? Uh, uh, because you have done a lot of work through experimentations. Uh, I may not have that uh, bandwidth. Uh, if I can learn it from from a point where I can start immediately playing in smaller things like roofings, in making trusses or walls, uh, can you point me point us towards any resources, ma'am? That's my question. I think the best would be to go and apprentice yourself on one of the sites such buildings is happening, I think that would be the best book that you can actually have. And then uh, keep reinforcing it uh, with uh, reading simultaneously as to you know, problems and whatever that they come on the site. Because there is no uh, better uh, way to learn than actually touching the material and handling the material by your hand. And that is something which we have done. Because I have been on the site. Uh, I never, it's almost like, you know, where, any site, I, I, I can't keep myself away from that. And I have been learning, and learning for everyone around from the, you know, as I said, the, the mason, the person, even the person who cleans the bamboo because they are touching the bamboo. I always sometimes feel jealous that probably they have more knowledge than me. So this is something which I would, uh, I would uh, you know, like uh, recommend that uh, you have some basic course. We are running some CGBMT, my organization, Center for Green Building Materials and Technology has been running these courses, as I said, from uh, 2011. That's a PG certificate course. That's a one-year course. And we have two uh, uh, practical sessions in that. Other than that, we are running modular, modular courses. This year, because of Corona and COVID, we could not uh, uh, do the admissions because that is 75% practical and only 25% theory is what we do because we feel 
hands on is much more important in when you are trying to learn but uh, we will be shortly doing it and uh, i think even with this master class we have two more practical sessions which is coming in february and march uh, and uh, uh, one is for uh, furniture and other elements and the second one in march is on uh, doing some small structure i think you can maybe start from there and then uh, take it forward that would be great thank you ma'am that's that's helpful thank you uh, now can we have a question from kashi rao rajan please so i just now asked sir i just now asked okay okay so we Any have someone who is asking about the yeah i will i think since nobody is coming forward i will just run through the uh, you know list and then i will uh, uh the highest height that we can go for can we go for multi storied building too is what is written here we can go for any number of buildings and um, and again as i said uh, we can have components it's not always necessary that uh, uh, we have the main structure but there is always a composite way of working with bamboo even if you are able to get 30% 40% or 50% bamboo in the building i think that that still you are contributing a lot so all your walling all your uh, flooring it can be done in bamboo your your windows and doors can be done with bamboo i mean that's like uh, it's like a, a mixed kind of a construction composite construction so it can be definitely done and you can have all the internal walling because external walling you will not be allowed to have 2 uh, inches wall because bamboo creek wall which you saw in my building is only 2 inches thick so in a city you actually are saving Seven inches in your rooms, which is a which is a lot of area, and it has the strength of a nine-inch wall and the cost of a four-inch wall. So you have a clear advantage out there. And in terms of sustainability, such buildings can be almost seven times more sustainable uh, than a normal building. And this is a calculation that we have done uh, long ago. So uh, we definitely know for sure. So this is something which actually can be done. So in a high high height, uh, uh, you can actually use it. and with that i think there are a lot of uh, wooden buildings being done all wood buildings and skyscrapers i think across the world now and they also all have joints because if you have wooden skyscrapers definitely wood you cannot have long uh, you know uh, long lengths so you you actually join them and bamboo has several problems of joint but then again i think as akhir habib khan was telling lot of research needs to be done and uh, we can definitely use it in some other way So that is uh, uh, not a problem. Uh, yeah. Another have, question uh, is uh, there is one uh, Anjumala Pradhan asking whether there are schools running yeah. these courses. I think uh, you are running it in Bangalore. They want to yes. know if they are. Not and, only and in Bangalore. Well, uh, we are doing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please tell me. No, uh, we we had to answer them. Uh, you are do okay. doing the uh, courses in india and they want to know yeah. whether uh, architect uh, uh, he has any program marcus has any program in thailand <coughs> i don't we don't have any fixed programs in thailand we will take we take interns once in a while but uh, we don't have any uh, academic kind of uh, a fixed program from our side okay you take uh, intern for uh, uh, students or uh, architects we have we have both once in a while we have sometimes architects sometimes students <clears throat> and we do exactly we have, uh... what, what architect nilam said before when you come as intern you first go to the to the bamboo washers and you help them to to uh, um treat the bamboo and put it into the borax and pull it back out and and put it into the sun and you know transport it on site and then prepare it for construction so you if you we 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 have the same approach as architect nilam it's also the most fun approach first you have to learn to know the material you have to touch it you have to be with it for a while because just sitting in front of the computer you, you get no idea how to work with bamboo yes yes yeah well very true so we we are running the courses we are running online courses the pg certificate course is online 
and the two uh, the two uh, workshop that we have that at that time you have to be present in bangalore and those dates we announce in the beginning of the schedule uh, is announced in the beginning of the session itself so that is one and then we have this modular courses uh, which is being done through dalbag university and this year we could not do because of covid but uh, as i said dalbag has 90 centers and if there are some people specific centers in uh, we are we had done in up madhya pradesh and uh, karnataka some other places we can actually run it so if there are people available we can do that and uh, i have an architectural practice and i take interns and uh, i also take architects if they are willing to work on it so and we put them on the site we put them in the office so they involve in all the man on, on the manner and we also do with mud so anjumala we we do uh, all kinds of this uh, combinations uh, with bamboo and which i feel is important to make it mainstream uh, for the general building industry so that we actually do yeah any more questions uh there is one from sanjana how does bamboo react when it is exposed to light and rain as shading devices i think marcus maybe you can uh, you can speak on that um yes like bamboo is like any other organic material if it's exposed to sunshine and rain it will decompose over time so in when you design bamboo structures you have to make sure that your structural components are protected from from the elements and then they will last but the the layer that is exposed which where we use we make bamboo roofs with split bamboo as the tiles um this one will have to be changed every 10 to 15 years or so like like you know many other roofing materials as well but the bamboo that is a structural bamboo has to be designed in a way that it is not completely exposed and then it will last 50 60 years or whatever any other organic material will last yeah same i think same what marcus told same i mean we also have the same approach because once it is it is exposed to the elements it actually degenerates like any other organic material and uh, there, there are uh, and i wanted to i have pointed that out in my presentation that there are many architects who are trying to have uh, facades or envelopes of bamboo and they look very nice in the photograph but let me tell you they are very difficult and uh, you know to maintain and if you maintain they are very expensive so in my opinion it is not advisable to do such designs uh, i mean that's what i feel I agree I have I have turned down a lot of this kind of of projects I yeah, think that, I think though that that uh, science will come to our side because I, I hear some I've looked at some new nano coatings where the where the element of the coatings are so small that they can actually stick to to the original wax layer of the bamboo and I think this is where the difference will come because if you have to take off the wax layer you take off the strongest part from the outside right yeah. so that's never advisable to do but if we can find coatings that can permanently stick to the wax layer and that is only possible if the molecules of the coatings are very very small and resisting at the same time which is a difficult thing to achieve and uh, i think we have to see what what, what the industri industry comes up with and whether those products then don't have too big a carbon footprint again to make it ideologically uh, um, acceptable yeah so can you can you address a quick piece of uh this uh, uh i didn't i didn't get you uh, with other what did you say bamboo has been tested uh, for a quick one of the question is that like whether it is can be used uh, in a very highly prone earthquake zones yeah actually this is the material to go to uh, for earthquake zones and uh, any kind of disaster zones and i think um, you know uh, this is something which should be actually promoted in a big way 
uh, in most of the disaster prone areas of the of the world and they also belong to uh, mostly the areas where bamboo actually happens it's like nature's way of giving a material in your hand uh, which is suitable for your place but you you don't uh, uh, you know like acknowledge that fact something like uh, the the air that we breathe and uh, till we don't have the air we do not realize the importance of air so the people as uh, marcus was telling that you know thailand people don't want to use bamboo because they keep seeing bamboo lying all around them and they think it is of no use uh, it's like a very poor man's use or something like that but this is the best uh, material to use in all disaster prone areas uh, during disaster for interim shelters even rehabilitation <coughs> and and permanent shelters for all of them yes i couldn't agree more i think there's no better material than bamboo for earthquake zones yes. you know the flexibility at the same time as the tensile strength compressive strength these <coughs> characteristics is ideal you couldn't make them better you just have to adjust the walls for example we have different kind of earthen walls one is just mud bricks or rammed earth but then there's one wall that we call that is called like wattle and doll where the main structure is actually made from bamboo and then it is packed with earth so that one is of course better for earthquake uh, um, places than the pure uh, earth walls because they can crack but the wattle and daub one and then you have a bamboo roof that's the that will be your last structure standing in any earthquake zone yes yes yeah yeah that is true thank you very much uh, i request uh, architect nilam to wrap up the thing okay i think there's one more question that is there i will just quickly insulating properties of 2 inch partition wall uh, anjumala pradhan i think she's from nepal relating to sound and heat actually these partition walls uh, uh, the heat and sound of course it doesn't have that kind of a Uh, of a very thick wall but uh, it has we have done some uh, uh, you know studies on that and we can share the details with you there's a lot of students of architecture they keep coming to my place and um, these studies have been done so i will just check and i think they had shared their uh, uh, you know details with us we will definitely share it with you if that i mean that should be good then how to bend the bamboo there is one here which is done by heat uh, and uh, the the thicker bamboo 4 inch bamboo i think maybe marcus you you would like to you have been working with lot of arched structures you would like to uh, speak about that well for us actually the the tension that is created by bend, bending bamboo naturally is part of how we how the trusses become very strong if you if you use heat and you bend bamboo to a certain shape it will stay in that shape but because it doesn't but it doesn't have the flexibility anymore to go back to its original shape you actually reduce the strength of the truss so we what we do is we just try to find the right diameter for the for the curve that we want to build so for smaller curves you need a smaller diameter of the bamboo and for bigger curves you need a bigger one and then you bend them as much as they can take and combine them and and fix them together while bending them and the truss stands like this and becomes very strong because of the tensile of the forces inside the truss right so so we just bend the bamboo as much as it naturally takes we don't do we don't add any other processes for the for the big trusses if you do chairs if you do interior furniture that's a different story but you know we are we're into big uh, uh, bigger bamboo architecture so we don't bend it more than yeah. it can be. yeah i also prefer the natural bend uh, uh, over bending the bamboo and there are a lot of people i just said that they look very fancy these bent bamboo structures but as i think marcus told they lose their flexibility so that strength gets lost in fact they are liable to crack and they become brittle once you heat them and try to sh shift them they become actually brittle so that is also one uh, problem so we also use a natural bent uh, bending of the you know material uh, and try to select bamboo as per the 
you know what are requirement and use that okay so termites i think we already talked about uh, treatment uh, we have abdul aziz uh, and he talked about the workmanship standards of the construction team uh, consist uh, yeah you have to probably have your own jigs and uh, uh, you know create your own jigs and all that kind of thing but then for all that also you really need to learn a lot first because um, you can't work with bamboo uh, you know uh, like a one off project you have to dedicate yourself to bamboo to be really uh, become free to design the way you want that will come only after you have done some smaller structures and then graduate to larger structures and that freedom comes once you have mastered the material it's like you know it's like writing poetry if you don't know the language you can't write poetry in it to make sense similarly if you do not know the material and how it works and respect respect the property of the material i always use this word respect for mud and bamboo because people have very scanty respect for such materials and that also comes in the way they design with it so they try to use it like any other material and most of the problems is caused because of that so that is something which uh, uh, and the workmanship only comes with more practice as i said more and more practice of joints and you know how you do it and handling bamboo i think uh, uh, how you dry the bamboo as i said this is a natural material this is not factory produce that you get a absolute like a pole or a pipe it's from the time it is harvested transported to your place you have to take care of in how to dry it how to clean it how to get it uh, treatment and all that i mean right now we don't have this kind of thing at this place i'm just hoping government actually has uh, started some uh, a work on some bamboo depots i'm told about 80 depots across the country and i'm hoping that properly treated cleaned and bamboos this will be available so which can be actually used but still when you are talking about designing you really need to learn the material by getting your hands dirty that's something uh, very important in my opinion so i have a question i'm from kasi rajan again sorry yes yeah yeah uh, yeah hello the uh, one more thing uh, i just was realizing i mean this is out of not a technical question uh, just uh, more on practice though architects uh, are willing to explore this material or use their product use this material in the in their practice how you uh, uh, madam and uh, architect markers were able to convince the client basically uh, how was is it a, is it a, you you had a tough time convincing as you started this practice or was it just like that <laughs> I, i just want to know your uh, both of your comments on that thank you markers you want to go first as you like yeah sure you see as we are very similar I must say you know architect nila may me in many ways because uh you have to invest first you see the project that gave us a name was our own project we invested in the school and we started doing this and then by creating structures that that became instagramable that people found appealing um we could convince the client that if you use our you know our design and our material you will stand out from the others and at the same time of course i have to convince the client of the durability of the strength and so so i bring him there i don't take a client who doesn't come to my sites why because once he walks through my buildings he will be convinced if he doesn't walk through my buildings i get the same questions again and again and again so it will be very difficult for you to convince a client if you've never built anything yourself and how do you start you got to put your hand into your own pocket and build something i think if you're not super lucky i don't really see another way at least for me it came from the government first with some three four projects uh because i started working in 2000 and uh, 1999 and then my own house came almost uh, 10 years later in 2008 and uh, there were some government projects and uh, with that i was also speaking at various forums 
uh, I was speaking at Sustainable World Sustainable Building Conference. I went to Tokyo. I spoke in Melbourne. I spoke in Helsinki. I spoke in various places. But yeah, I invested my money in in going because they were not giving me tickets. My papers would get accepted. Nobody giving any money for the tickets. But I, I was promoting it everywhere in the country, outside the country, any forum that I could get to. And that uh, probably is where people were coming to me. And uh, so most of the government projects came in the beginning. But uh, the government projects, the moment you take a contractor from the government side, the, your uh, finishing of the building actually takes some uh, this thing because uh, they uh, somehow I have found that you know they were not very uh, you know uh, bothered about the finishing of the building and that you have to make it appealing to the public means the finishing of the building has to be much better. So then uh, some of the projects, the smaller projects started coming and we, we diverted from there and had our own details, started working on our own details. But with all this, we have faced court cases. After the whole building is finished and you are about to get your last uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, payment and then suddenly you get a court notice or something like that. And we won the case, that is another matter, but we never got the money even after that. And a and, uh, lot of uh, you know, tantrums from people asking you to sign a bond that this will work. We had a person from uh, Aziz Premji Foundation asking me to sign a bond as an architect that this will last. I said, no way. You have to sign a bond that you will not bother me because we are exploring it together. And I'm not telling, I'm not giving any guarantee of it. You take your own time see the projects that I have done. If you are convinced, come to me. So they had tried to tell me, oh, you are going and starting speaking about everywhere. I said, yeah, I'm convinced and I am speaking about it. But you also have to be convinced to put your money. So you do your research. And these kind of projects, unless and until the architect, the client and the contractor, unless and until we work like a team, we have to work like a team. Only then these kind of buildings where you're pushing the envelope and boundaries can actually come up. So this is something which is, it took a lot of time. And then after I did my house, which I <laughs> shaved myself of uh, almost like uh, uh, several million. And then uh, people actually started uh, coming forward, seeing those projects. So now that problem is not there. But even now, you know, like people barge in, they want the work done. And when the, it comes to the last payment, I have problems with them telling, not, then they start telling, oh, there are cracks and there's a discoloration, that there is this thing, the bamboo is not straight. But in the beginning, uh, they are all, you know, like starry eyed. Uh, we are all green activists. That's how they come. But the, by the time that we finish the building, they, they develop a cold feet. But all, not all of them are like that because uh, not all of them are like that, they are, but there are cases like that. Like we had DDA, imagine uh, a government body uh, in 2006, and they had a inspecting person. It's a very funny thing that I'm speaking again on a public forum about this. They have a ritual of taking some money to pass the building that it is completely fine. And that guy kept on telling, but there's no problem in the building. So, you know, it, it was coming from them. And again, after 14 years, they have approached me uh, to uh, take care of the bridge and, you know, or, or if I want to do the bridge again or something like that. So there are other kind of clients also that we have got. Uh, we had Dunadi, uh, which uh, the Rome that, you know, is just a two lakh, three lakh building, a small building of prefab that I did. But in 2011, when I went there from Rome, he came to pick me up. He took me to the project. And you know, so there are other clients who are like that. But yes, maximum, uh, it, it has been a very difficult journey. I completely lost my practice. And um, from something like, uh, you know, one or two million square feet that I used to be having on my design table, I went down to some 100, 100 square feet, 500 square feet projects and no money in my account. That's where I went when I, and, uh, the more and more I was called a bamboo architect, the more and more my uh, account be keep, kept becoming empty and uh, no projects and things like that. So that was a, and then I had to take a call as to how to really go about it. 
and that was around 2006-2007. Uh, that's how it happened. But yes, I'm, I'm, it has changed. And again, I'm back to around, uh, I think, uh, two, three million square feet of construction design okay. work on my business now. So uh, it takes time. It takes time. It doesn't happen just like that. Very nostalgic journey, ma'am. <laughs> Yeah, uh, very nostalgic. One more, the one more uh, clari I mean, clarification. I just want to know is basically uh, now that uh, uh, you have successfully established a firm and now it's going fine. Where do you find a gap? Is it the is the gap is in the uh, client side, workmen as in the laborers or the architect? Where is the void for bamboo uh, that is there, or uh, across the board everywhere? Where do you both of you find the gap? Is? The widest. Uh, I think there is one gap that we had is about the SR. Uh, uh, we don't have enough, uh, you know, uh, bamboo items, bamboo related items in the schedule of rates of the from the government. And government in any country is the biggest builder, so that actually if that acceptance comes, it will be a long way. The second part, I think, uh, in my last three slides, I I just one of the thing was that about kacha and pakka house. Uh, buildings, I would say. So a kacha house is something which is made of mud and bamboo, and the pakka house is one is made of cement and steel. So uh, the millions and millions of kacha houses which are which are there in our build in our in our country never get uh, insurance. They never get a bank loan, and they don't get approved in the uh, from the authorities. And this definition of kacha and pakka building needs to be taken away. Because India actually is not does not have so much of homeless people as it is shown in the statistics. People have houses and they are much healthier houses than cement concrete. True. Let me True. tell you. True. Yeah. So, so it is in the in the political political people want to show India as poor. Political people want to show Indian people as unhappy and houseless and all those things. But people are not. People are very happy with their mud houses. And this is my personal experience because I keep going to the most interior part uh, when I work with bamboo and when I work with people, I have to call the uh, bamboo artisans. I have to learn the te traditional techniques from them to take it forward. And uh, they are very happy. In the cement houses, they keep their uh, uh, buffaloes and cows. They live in the mud houses because they find them very cool. They find them healthy. Uh, their grains don't get destroyed. If in these modern bamboo houses. I mean, there are several things, but these things are not uh, really brought to the uh, you know, front. So this kacha and pakka house is another thing. Then we have these IS codes, the building codes, which actually need much more comprehensive work and research. If that is done, then more and more structural engineers will come into the picture, which uh, have been very skeptical uh, you know, in, in trying to sign the drawings. And uh, so I have been my architect and structural engineer most of the time. And uh, we have discussions with them, but they don't sign the drawings most of the time. So based on my own uh, thing I have been doing, but I, we need engineers in the, in the uh, you know, building engineers, civil engineers, uh, structural engineers in the thing. So these are some few things. And of course, in the curriculum, uh, you know, everywhere uh, in uh, building sciences, we need to really put it. Uh, and then uh, right from the beginning, not just as a uh, elective or something like that, but as a proper material, the way uh, brick and cement and steel and uh, stone and all are taught, wood, same way bamboo and mud also should be taught. You know, so that is something which I feel there are three, four factors which uh, need, need to be taken care. I hope I have answered the question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, Anjumala, I'll be most happy to do that. Uh, you know, we can get in touch separately. Uh, you know, so definitely we would like to do that. You can you can write to us. You know. Sure, ma'am. Sure. Yeah. So I think now if uh, there are no any further suggested questions and we already uh, overshot our time limit. Um, 
so thank you very uh, uh, very much architect marcus and i think uh, it was a very uh, uh, your work yeah, i have always admired your work in the pandian school uh, and all the work and i would love to visit it sometime and i i i ask all the other people also uh, you know the participants to visit your place it's really worth visiting uh, thank you very really much happy to yeah. collaborate thank yeah. you for and, and i also invite you to yeah i also invite you to come to india sometime whenever the covid permits now <laughs> so uh, and we can have some uh, uh, you know some good collaboration too yes and i would love to meet you i will definitely take take you up on that one when when we can travel again thank you so much and and all the best to you and i can mark us if you want to give one suggestion to the participants about it would be excuse me one suggestion or advice to the participants aha uh -huh, okay uh, you know you know you, see, you you were very good you said everything more or less you, you you have to be passionate about it at the same time you have to be scientific and you have to be commercially astute so it is it is a combination of things that that will make it successful and everybody will have a different path and everybody will focus on something different like i like bigger structures some people like furniture some like interior you know everybody's different and there's no right and wrong the only way to find out is by going for it you just have to start and the best way to start is by doing something yourself reading is good but it's only supportive and i'm only repeating what architect nilam already said uh and once you get infected with the bamboo once you start it you will see the opportunity they will come by themselves yes i call it the bamboo effect yes uh, it affects you like you know you can't be inert it affects yes. you in in yes. certain ways okay so thank you all the participants and thank you uh, architect vidyadhar for uh, moderating the session in such a nice manner and thank i you. thank uh, architect ganesh and dr ganesh uh, you know this is the last session of the uh, theory part and we have two more uh, uh, responsibility of two more uh, hands on uh, hands on sessions on uh, in february and march and we have to think as to so i would uh, like the part to just to tell the participants we'll be putting up the dates very soon uh, so you can always uh, uh, you know register for that and uh, uh, i thank uh, uh, siddharth uh, uh, from triple ad for really uh, making the session uh, the technical the technical part of the session taking care of it in a very and other team that he, he has behind him in triple ad to take care of the whole uh, session and the participants uh, we have uh, it has been a very nice journey in five uh, uh, sessions that we have had and uh, this was a master class uh, and is a little different from the other webinars and uh, uh, the certificates that we have here are of two types as i think uh, we had uh, dr ganesh actually uh, pointed it out uh, in the beginning of the session uh, there is a Uh, participation certificate and there is a completion certificate so there are two different types and to get the completion certificate you have some assignments and as a, as myself and akrik markus have been talking unless until you do something you actually will not take away much from the master class and for that only we have actually put these assignments so that we are able to help you to start so to the question that people asked participants asked as to what to do the first thing is to do the assignments so if you do the assignments and we check it it will be the best people um, uh, uh, across the world who will be seeing these participants uh, seeing these assignments uh, and uh, you will really uh, benefit from it and you will take it away in a constructive manner and uh, so there are three uh, assignments that we had given in the form of three competitions the first product design competition street furniture design competition and product design and and there was another one for the uh, uh, you know third one which was the prefab structure so if you do it till product design you get a certificate of completion till 1.3 master class and if you do it uh, the street furniture design you get it till 1.4 and if you complete all three 
uh, then you get a 1.5 uh, till 1.5 and if you finish the other two which is the uh, uh, other hands on classes we will be awarding you the certificate of completion of the uh, uh, certificate course on bamboo application technology from center for green building materials and technology so this was one thing that i really uh, wanted to share and uh, thank you all for uh, uh, joining us and we hope that the assignments will be submitted to us and we will have a lot of enthusiastic people we also to know the level as to how much you have actually understood so that we can help you out and you becoming our ambassadors of the kind of work that myself and marcus uh, uh, we have been doing we will see you as ambassadors of the work uh, of uh, you know of the uh, in the future uh, you know um, as our successors so that is the goal so thank you so much once again and have a very nice uh, weekend and thank you thank you so much thank you.